mean free path. So we've got these molecules are traveling in straight lines until they run into something. The average distance that a molecule travels before it runs into something is its average, is its mean free path. Mean and average mean the same thing. The mean free path. So the mean free path is going to decrease as the pressure increases. So one way to increase pressure would be to make the container smaller. It makes sense that the particles are going to run into each other and into the walls more frequently then. So they're not going to be able to travel as far without bumping into something. Or you could increase the temperature, or you could put more gas molecules in. All of us would decrease the mean free path. Um, thinking about a gas under normal conditions, if nitrogen was the size of a golf ball, it would go about 40 feet before it ran into something. So you think about nitrogen molecules in the air. They're moving, like, on average, 40 feet before they run into something. So they might be able to go all the way across the room without hitting another gas molecule, without hitting a person or anything. You know, just hit the wall and then bounce back. I'm trying to give you a picture for what these gas molecules are doing. They're really kind of out there on their own. <coughs> so I have, I have five sons, and um, I have one daughter. One daughter. Yeah. So there's a lot of farting at my house. <laughs> Girls fart, too. Though. Girls fart, too. Yeah, she can fart with the best of them. Um, my youngest is eight, and so he thinks it's still pretty funny. And the junior higher thinks it's pretty funny, too. The high school guys, he's a little embarrassed. Um, so what happens? You know, somebody farts in the corner, right? And it's stinky. Does the smell stay over there by the person? No. It spreads. It spreads pretty quickly, too, doesn't it? How do gases do that? Well, what are the gas molecules doing? They're moving, right? We just said a nitrogen molecule can go on average 40 feet through air without running into anything. So, little Andrew, who knows what he ate? Man, that stinks, right? Those are gaseous, not you, Andrew, my Andrew. My little guy's name is Andrew, and he's a character, which I've come to learn is typical of Andrews, but it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Um, okay, so Andrew Toots and those smelly gas molecules leave his bump, right? And they don't just hang around him. They just, they head out in straight lines until they run into something. And they very quickly diffuse throughout the room. So diffusion is a process by which gas molecules are going to spread out from a high concentration to a low concentration. They're going to spread out. They're going to fill the entire container, whatever it is. And that, you know, you, you can buy these diffusers, these little things you plug into the wall, and they, they heat up something that smells nice. And that also diffuses throughout the room. So that's what diffusion is. Effusion is slightly different. That's a process by which a gas escapes through a small hole into a vacuum. And the rates of diffusion and effusion are both related to the velocity of the particles. Because if you think about it, the faster the particles are moving, the faster they're going to spread out, right? So we see that at, a, uh, at the same temperature, the rate of gas movement is inversely proportional to the square root of the molar mass. Because Remember the equation? The root mean square velocity is equal to the square root of 3RT over the molar mass. So the larger the molar mass, the smaller this number, the smaller the velocity, the lower the gas movement, the lower the rate of gas movement. So this is an illustration of effusion. So we have Two boxes side by side, a little tiny hole here. Originally, we have all the gas particles on this side and none on this side. The gas particles are just going around till they bump into each other. 
when one happens to score a direct hit on this hole, it will go through. And then it'll bounce around here, and it could possibly score a direct hole on the hit, hit on the hole, <laughs> and go back. But the rate at which the particles go through that hole is the rate of effusion. <coughs> And it depends only on their velocity. Okay, so this is the equation expressing rates of effusion or rates of diffusion as well. The rate of A to the rate of B is equal to the square root of the ratio of their molar masses. Of B's on top and A's on the bottom, because the faster the diffusion, the smaller the molecule. There's an inverse relationship there. Helium escapes from balloons faster than air because of its smaller size. Not because it's small enough that it can fit through the holes in the latex balloon. A latex balloon has little tiny pores. Those pores are large enough for oxygen and nitrogen to get through as well as helium. But if you blow up two balloons at the same pressure, one with helium and one with air, and leave them over time, you'll see that the helium balloon goes flat faster than the air balloon. And it's not because of the gas molecules' sizes, it's because of the speed at which they move. In order for the gases to escape through the little tiny pores in the, in the balloon, they have to hit the hole direct. They're not being sucked out. As our experience is that, well, you know, you've, you've got like a hole in the side of a boat or something is, water pouring in, right? And it's like this force that's bringing it in. Or air escaping. We feel the air coming out. These particles are not being swept out with other stuff. They are the stuff that's sweeping out. OK? So try to get your mind around that one. Find the ratio of effusion rates of hydrogen gas and krypton gas. This is one that makes people crazy because there's no numbers there. <laughs> what do we do? There's no numbers. OK, ratio of effusion rates. We need that equation. And I'm going to give you that equation. So the equation is that the rate of A to the rate of B is equal to the square root of the molar mass of B over the molar mass of A. Hmm? They're yeah, they're swapped. So this ratio, in terms of the letters, is upside down of that side. Well, let's say that hydrogen is A and krypton is B. So the rate the rate of hydrogen to the rate of krypton is going to equal the square root of the molar mass of krypton on the top, 83.80 grams per mole. And on the bottom, hydrogen, hydrogen's diatomic, 2.016 grams per mole. In that other equation, it was important that these molar masses be in kilograms per mole. Does it matter here? No, because they're going to cancel out. It would be fine if you put them in kilograms per mole, but it's not necessary because the grams will cancel and the moles will cancel. So I've got the square root of 83.8 divided by 2.016. How many sig figs? Four. 6.447. What are the units? Nothing. No units. It's a ratio. It doesn't look like a ratio, though, does it? It looks like a single number. Well, the ratio of hydrogen to krypton would be 6.447 to 1. 
What is the little dash that you put in the middle of the hydrogen? That's a semicolon. Oh, okay. This to that is this to that. I'm sorry. Yes, it's a colon. It wasn't a very good one now. Now it's better. So now it's a, it's a full-fledged oh. colon. So is that how you want the answer? Um, is that how I want the answer? Most of these, in fact, probably all of the questions that you'll see from me will either be on Mastering Chemistry, so it'll tell you, or it'll be on an exam where it'll be multiple choice. Um, but just, just recognize that you're getting this number and it's asking for a ratio and it doesn't look like a ratio. So how do you make it into a ratio? Well, it's just to one. Any other questions?